Hey, 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 Carol Jr. here. I know I don't normally do the uh, restoration parts of the videos, the fix parts, but today I'm gonna be doing a full restore on this 1971 Schwinn Manta Ray. Cause I'm into Schwinns, I'm into old bikes. I don't know if you knew that or not. It's kind of a expensive hobby, but uh, add that to the list, right? Well, all these hobbies usually are, aren't they? <laughs> But anyway, I'm doing this Manta Ray, which I got from a guy locally here. I've been looking for one for a while. Finally was able to hunt one down. Uh, I got a pretty okay price on it. I don't know, for a lot of the parts that are missing, I kind of wish I would have known a little more about them when I uh, went over there to pick it up. I probably could have haggled with them a little more knowing that some of the parts on there were missing. I didn't realize some of this stuff at the time but anyhow let's go over some of the things on this bike that uh i wish i would have known when i picked it up maybe you'll know this when you go to do it it's in its original color except for the chain guard here and it's uh, a three speed which doesn't exist i didn't really know that the guy was all like oh yeah it's rare because it's a three speed version but uh, I didn't know. He didn't send me photos before I went over there to really know what, a, what I was getting myself into. And uh, I bought it thinking, oh, cool, wow, yeah. Come to find out it's missing the sprocket, which is a five-speed sprocket it's supposed to have on there. I knew the seat was missing. That's not the original seat. It's got like a fatter seat. This is just a basic... Uh, banana seat that's common on a lot of these old Schwinn Stingrays back in the day the 60s ones seven early 70s but it's got a three-speed shifter which is about a 68 shifter and the hub is a 67 Sturmy Archer hub which is uh, a good hub it works I got it working and everything it all shifts and everything like that it's just not original and then the chain guard, they had painted, somebody had painted that. And it, as you can see, it does not match the rest of the orange, but it is clean. It is a fairly clean chain guard there. I think that's the original sprocket too, it looks like. It does look like an original sprocket. Pedals, I'm unsure. I saw a couple manta rays that had pedals like that. And then I saw other ones that had different pedals. So I'm gonna have to look into that to see. Someone mentioned that these are not the original handlebars, but that I don't know. They kind of look like the ones I've seen on Manta Rays. They kind of look to be original. Those grips are not original. I did order some orange Schwinn grips. They're on their way. So I'm gonna replace the grips. And I got a, uh, a graphic coming for the chain guard. So I'm gonna swap that chain guard. I'm gonna take that off. I'm going to have it match to the color of the frame, and then I'm going to repaint the frame, uh, chain guard so that it matches. Now I'm going to put the new graphic on there. Um, yeah. So I'm thinking, I just got this bike. This is, it's in July now I'm doing this, starting on this restoration. So it's going to take me a while to hunt down some of these parts and find some of this stuff, because it's not easy finding this old stuff. Plus I gotta find it at a deal because a lot of this stuff's getting pricey to get. So I'm gonna try to restore it back to original, which means I'll have the five speed, the five speed shifter, um, the original seat. And then, uh, yeah, I'm gonna repaint it. I'm thinking of repaint, even though I know, all right, I already know what you guys say. I already know what you guys are gonna say in the comments section, oh, Junior. You should leave it original because it's worth more money if it's got the original paint. Yeah, it's original. Don't touch it. Otherwise, you're going to bring the value down. Well, it's kind of beat up. And the graphics are pretty worn. And if I'm going to restore it, I might as well paint it. I'm probably just going to rattle can it because that's the easiest way. Powder coating it's gonna kind of cover up the cereal and stuff. I don't know, it's not terribly bad. I don't know, maybe I'll leave it. I'm kind of torn on whether I should paint it or not. 
because I have heard that it'll bring down the value of it because they want the original paint. But it's not original, as you can see, because the uh, shifter isn't original. It's got that different hub, and the chain guard's already been painted. So that's kind of already been done. But that's not a big deal. So I don't know. Maybe I will leave it original paint and just kind of go from there around it. The tire on the back, I got uh, new uh kenda tires on the way so i can ride the thing because i do want to ride it that is the point i don't want to just restore it and then park it and let it sit i like to ride these things and this one being a 24 inch tires it's easier for me to ride because i'm taller i'm about 6'1 so it's kind of nice having this model as opposed to like the fastback and the stingrays are a little smaller they only made these bikes for two years 71 and 72 are the only two years they made them um they were for big kids the older kids but a lot of the older kids didn't want to ride bikes that look like little kid bikes they're like i don't want this plus you know i'm getting older i don't want to ride bikes i want like a motorcycle or car or whatever so they didn't sell real well i guess at the time so they're kind of rare that might be another reason why i might not repaint it is because uh yeah they're kind of becoming more rare these bikes and the paint, I guess, isn't too bad. I kind of thought it was worse than it was. It'd be nice if the graphic was in a little bit better shape. But I don't know. I'm still torn on that. I might repaint it. I might not. Well, I'm definitely going to do the chain guard and add the graphic. And I'm going to try to find a five-speed hub. I might have to swap one over from a, a fastback onto those spokes on that rim. So we'll see how that goes. Um, the shifter... I could probably sell the three-speed shifter that's on there and find the proper one. Some of this stuff, the seat, I'm going to probably sell. I'm going to try to get some of my money back on it to use towards the other parts. So we'll see how that all plays out. Like I said, some of this stuff's hard to hunt down. So these tires are kind of hard to find too because Schwinn always used these odd size rims and stuff that you can only get for their, their brand to keep them, you know, unique and different. So it was kind of hard even hunting down repop tires that'll work for this just so I could ride it because I don't want to ride on the original tires because they get all dry rotted, they, they uh, pop. I've done that before in the past and I kept having flat tires. So I thought, yeah, I got to buy new ones. So I got Kendas on the way, which wasn't easy. There's only pretty much like one style of Kenda tire that fits this specific rim. These S5 and S6 rims is what they are. So you really got to hunt for them. They weren't too bad there. I think they were like 20 bucks a piece and then I had to get tubes. So that wasn't too bad. So I got new tires coming that are Kendas. They're not original, but again, I want to ride it and I don't want to buy original tires because you know, I want to ride the thing. It also came with this turn signal was on the back and it didn't work. And me and Pa had to uh, solder some wires to get it to work and look at that now it works it doesn't blink it just lets you know you're going that way or going that way so yeah i don't know if i'll put that on there or put that on one of my other bikes but that was kind of cool it came with it so yeah i'm gonna go through this thing i'm gonna start by stripping off the uh, front fork there because i gotta give that away to the auto parts store to match the color for the chain guard so it'd be easier to just give them the front fork to match the color. And then I'll get that in a rattle can. And then I'll have to uh, lightly sand, scuff up the chain guard a little. Like I said, it's clean and smooth, so it doesn't need much there. And then I'm going to hit it with some orange that matches the frame because they can match that color dead on at this auto parts store nearby here. And then uh, at least that will match. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to put the graphic on and then the tires and then I'll be able to kind of ride it. All right, I'm back. I got the fork off. As you can see there. It wasn't hard. It wasn't that bad. Here's the bike on the ground. So just had to take off a few things, a few bolts. Here's a better look at that graphic. It's pretty beat up. The paint itself's not too bad. It's a little chipped here and there. There's some marks. Overall, it's pretty, it's pretty good. 
I mean, it's got that original patina to it. This may need to be replaced or painted or something. I might need to freshen that up to give it a better look. Like I said before, I don't know if these are the original pedals. They kind of don't look like it. I got a set that I bought for another bike, so maybe I'll swap them over to that. They're more original. Here's a look at the wheels. Here's the rim. I believe these are the original rims. Maybe somebody swapped this over to this hub, this three-speed Sturmy Archer. It's got a 67 on it there. I don't know if you can see that there. It says 67. It works, it rides and everything and shifts. It's just not what came on it. These are the original tires too. They're Schwinn tires. But like I said before, I'm gonna swap those out for some repop Kendas. That way I can ride this thing safely and securely. Here's a better look at that of oh, those handlebars. Those are the not right grips. I got the right ones coming, the orange. I believe they're cool orange. But I don't know, is that any of you out there know? Is that the original? Is that what came on the Manta Ray, those hand, handlebars like that? All right, so while I wait on the paint to come back from the uh, auto parts store, I took the fender off the back. It's got this little rivet in here. I don't know where I did with it. Oh, here it is, a little rivet head was in there, so I had to drill that out in order to get that out. And this thing's pretty beat and rusty. So I, I looked on eBay and I found this one here. It's an exact new old stock replacement. It was 15 bucks with the shipping. So I figured I'm not even gonna bother with trying to clean this one up and painting it or whatever. It's pretty, pretty rusty. And... So I, I just bought that one. So I'm just gonna stick that on there. And I, bought, I got a 3 16 round head screw. I'm gonna stick that in there. And that'll uh, make it so I can take this off and on. If I ever need to get that off in the future, I won't have to drill it out like I did with the rivet. So yeah, tighten that up. Now I'm gonna polish it up with some Colonel Brassy. Put some on the little buffing pad. See what I can do to try to clean up this rusty pitted fender a little bit better to get it looking a little bit more nicer before I stick it back on there. And hopefully I'll be able to uh, get that paint back soon. So another good tool is this stainless steel scouring pad stuff that they sell. That works great on uh, cleaning up this pitted metal, this pitted uh, chrome. We got this from our buddy Dennis that lives over in Ohio. We always see him at uh, Portland and Mid-Ohio and he's been in a couple videos. So thanks Dennis, this stuff works great. Check this stuff out though if you don't know about it already. Alright, so I got the back fender on. Got it all polished up as best as I could. I got this little bracket on here now. Uh, it's pretty straight looking. I might have to tweak it a little bit later when I get the tire on. I had to take off this sissy bar and bend that straight because it was bent up. So we bent that back. Then I took the handlebars off. And now I want to put the new grips on that I got off eBay. Because these black ones that came with it aren't the original ones. And I wanted it to be as close as I can to original. So, went and ordered those. Now we're going to put these on. Stick a little screwdriver in there as like a lead. Spray some PP Blaster or WD 40 or something in there. Spin it around, let that lube get in there, and then uh, slides right off. The only thing is you're going to want to clean that off though before you put the new ones on because you don't want it, you don't want lubrication in there. You want them to be tight. 
So there's a little trick for doing that. I'll show you when I go to put those new ones on. How to get just enough lubrication to slide them on. But then it'll dry up. See? Come right off of there. How do you like that? Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! Woo! Woo! Ha <laughs> ha! We gotta polish that up. Clean that up a little. Like I said, you want to get all that lubrication on. It'll dry up over time. I've had that on some other bikes where there's a little bit of lubrication on there. And take the new grips. Now you take carb spray. Spray a little of that and it won't eat the rubber. I already tested it. This is a trick I learned from a, a buddy of my paws. You put a little of that on there. Shove it on there. Get it up there as good as you can. Then as that dries up, it's now it's tight. Can't even bend it. So yeah, take a little carb spray. Spray it on in there. It's enough to get it wet. Shove it on there. And then as it dries, it's gonna it's gonna get tight. And then now it won't turn as it evaporates. That's that's on there, good. So yeah, took them old ones off, pop them new ones on. Now I got the uh, new tires came in, in the tubes, so I'm gonna have to take the old tires off, put the new tubes in, put the new tires on, and we'll move on from there. Ha ha! All right, on to the tires. So I got two new tires in, there's only one type of Kenda tire made that will fit these rims. Schwinn uses real odd sized stuff, the originals. So this is an S5 or S6 rim. And there's one Kenda tire, it's a K62. The uh, size is 24 inch by one and a quarter by one and three eighths. It says one and three eighths on the tire and this is what I got when I when I punched it in. There was a place Performance Tires online had this Performance uh, Bicycle Parts or something it was called. Performance something. But anyway, it says on here, wire beads 70 to 75 PSI. Trust me, you're not going to want to put 70 to 75 pounds in these tires. The tube will blow up like a bomb. It's not like I know from personal experience or anything. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what happened. So, this is a Schrader valve specialized tube. It's a 24 by 1 and an eighth dash 1 and 3 eighth tube made for these tires. So, uh, yeah, I already put one in and it worked. So, I want to show you how to put the other one in. Well, let's take the air out of this three-speed one. If anybody out there has got a five-speed sprocket that I need for to make this original, hit us up. Email terrofixesall at gmail.com. I'll pay cash money. But I'd like to have the proper sprocket and rim. I'm not I'm new to this whole thing. I don't really have a lot of tools. I'm still kind of getting tools. So, and I'm learning. People were saying you could take a sprocket off of a, a fastback, which I also have, and put it on there and, and re-spoke uh, it. But I don't know about that because I don't know about with the sizing, if these spokes would work or what. I might be better off just getting a whole new rim that's already got the sprocket on it if I could find that. Like I said earlier, I think I mentioned earlier in the video, they, they uh, only made the Manta Ray for two years, 71 and 72. 
So it's kind of hard, getting harder to find parts for these. Because a lot of people don't part them out. They want to keep, keep them as original as possible. So it's getting hard. I need a seat too. Still looking for a seat. So if anybody's got a seat for this old, old gal, that'd be great. Let me know. Even if I got a real polster it. I just need the pan, really. And I'm trying to get this thing back to original as much as possible. This was the three-speed rim that came on it. So I'm just going to, I guess, kind of clean it up. I'm not doing a full restore because that's pretty involved. There's a lot of other videos on YouTube with guys doing full restores where they take all the spokes out and they clean every little part. Mine really isn't that bad. This rim's pretty clean, so I don't really feel like I need to do a full restore on everything. But uh, I am going to clean it up and kind of try to get it as back to original as possible. If that's even going to be possible. We'll see. Stuff's getting pricey. Stuff's getting hard to find. So I don't know. Might be a long shot. So what I like to do when I put a new tire on, take the tube, let me get the new tire. Here's that new Kenda. I like to kind of throw a little air in it to get it tubular shaped so it fits inside the tire easier. Kind of do one of these little thingy medus. You don't want to fill it up too much. You just want to throw a little uh, air in there to get it, you know. That way you don't pinch it or get it folded when you're trying to stick it inside here and get it on the rim. Once you get it on there, you can't even uh, deflate it a little too, might help. It seems to help kind of having some air in there. Now the first one I did kind of went on a little tough. Some of these bike tires, they just slip right on, but this one, the first one I did was a little tough. So hopefully, with a little soap and water, I can pop this little guy on fairly easy. But we'll see, because as you know, with mechanical stuff, it's never easy. Now, Pa had me singing this new song. It's a popular song, some of you might know. Based on being a Schwinn guy, he was singing, uh, All my friends are Murray Riders, but I'm a Schwinn man. Cause I'm a Schwinn man. I do got a Murray though too, that I bought pork. But I'm a Schwinn man. I would like to find a Huffy at some point too. Another one he had me singing was that Rush song, Schwinn man. They call me the Schwinn Man. I guess that's what I am. Ha <laughs> ha! So yeah, it's kind of going on a little, little uneven here, but try to get a little soap on there. Lubrication, they say, is key. Kind of helps slide around there. Otherwise, you're fighting against the grip of the tire. Kind of like putting a tire on a lawn tractor. Same deal. These are a little tough, though, and I don't want to pinch it. Try to get one side on at a time and then go around and work the other side in, if possible here. Kind of going on there. Fairly easy. I think the other one was a little tougher than this. But here we gotta get this other bead on there. So yeah. Let me know in the comments section what kind of bicycle you used to have back in the day. 
You have a Schwinn, a Huffy, a Murray. There's many different ones. You have a muscle bike, or were you not cool enough or couldn't afford the muscle bike or the Schwinn? That's what I hear a lot of these old guys always say. I always wanted the Schwinn, but my parents weren't going to buy me that, so I had to settle for the, uh, the Murray or the cheaper version. All right, that's on. So we got this handy dandy air uh, gauge built in. We actually had a fan send us this. I think Dennis was his name. Sent us this. So you just stick it on the valve. The valve stem here. Turn it on. And it tells you how much is in there, which is nice. We're going to go about 40, we're going to go about 45. Because like I said, I did it, I aired it up to, uh, I aired it up to 70, 75 pounds, and that thing blew up like a bomb. <laughs> so yeah, let's check and see how true it is. Again, I don't have the proper tools yet. I'm still kind of building up my, my tools for my bike stuff because I just got into this hobby. I just kind of want to make sure that the, the tire is not too uneven. The rim looks good. I do notice a slight dip in the tire a little bit, but I'm not really going to know until I, until I go to ride it, I guess, if it's noticeable or not. Oh, money's here! So, uh, I might get settled in as I ride on it. So, another thing I talked earlier about, I was thinking of repainting the frame. I wasn't sure what I was going to do there. And I've decided after consulting, uh, consulting with the Schwinn groups and, and stuff that I'm going to leave the frame the way it is. Somebody already repainted the chain guard. That's why it's that off orange. So what I'm going to do is repaint the, I have the paint being mixed right now. Hopefully they can do it because I guess they need a bigger piece than what I have off the bike to be able to match the color to the original. So hopefully they can match the original paint. But I'm going to repaint that chain guard. And I got the graphic off eBay. I'm going to put the new Manta Ray graphic on there. But I'm going to leave the, the chain guard, I'm going to repaint, and then the, the frame, I'm going to leave. I don't want to touch that because that's original paint and patina, and everyone's saying, don't, don't touch that. You're going to ruin the value. Don't do that, Junior. You're going to ruin the box value. Everyone wants the patina. So, get it, get it, boy. Woo! So, yeah, I'm going to leave that, that paint on there because everybody's saying, and, and it, it's not that bad. It's got some chips and stuff, some nicks in it, but I'm going to leave her be to preserve the old patina. So yeah, waiting on that paint to come in. Now I'm going to do the, uh, the chain guard next. Then I'm going to pop the tires on and I'm going to go from there. All right, it's a new dawn. It's a new day. Finally got in the paint for the chain guard. Got it from uh, John over at Auto Value. They do uh, custom mixed paint, which is nice. They'll actually match to the uh, color of your, of your choice. So I gave them these forks here. They were able to match it. I guess it was a little bit of a challenge, but they got it. So I sprayed it on this little test piece here. And then I put this up to the frame and it looks like a pretty close match, as you can see. So, I'm going to go ahead. I, I already sanded, lightly sanded the chain guard here. This is the old paint that they had on there. I lightly sanded it. Then I hit it with some final clean to uh, take off the dust. I used 400 grit. Pa had a bunch of these on a roll, sticky little things. So I used them. Scuffed it up. Now it's time to get painting. Ha <laughs> ha!
All right, got the chain guard all done now. All painted, looks good, nice and smooth. So now comes the fun part, putting the decal on. I got this off eBay, so you gotta soak it in some warm water and you slide it off onto the chain guard, let it set up, and that's that. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, we got the graphic on there. Check that out. I don't know if you can see that. It looks pretty good, huh? It's still got to dry. It's going to take four to 24 hours, it said. So in the meantime, I noticed someone pointed out how it didn't have the correct pedals on there. Here's the ones that were on there. These are not correct. These are like cruiser pedals. So when I was restoring my Grey Ghost, I was trying to get it up to a uh, more original look. I went and bought some pedals online off a guy. So I'm going to stick these on there. It'll at least look a little closer to original than what was on there. So yeah, now I'm assembling the bike back together. Then I'm going to put the chain guard on last. And then we'll give you a look at what it looks like all finished. All right, got the manta ray back together. Got the chain guard on. Look at that, looks pretty nice. Ties it in a lot better. Got the new grips. This came on it. That was original with the bike. Well, not original, but when I got it, it came with it. The chain guard really ties it in nice, so that makes it look a lot better. The paint matches really good. Look, notice that. The two shades match a lot better than it did before. So yeah, let's take it for a cruise and uh, see how well it rides. So yeah, next up, I'm gonna get some decals for here. To clean that up, it's gonna pop more like that. There's a decal here, decal here, and a new decal here you can put on there. So yeah, this thing rides great, it rides smooth. I love it, this bike's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna put the decals on and then that might be it for this series, for this uh, part here. Cause again, I'm gonna have to hunt down a seat that might not be easy. Now I'm going to have to try to find the five-speed hub and the five-speed shifter and then a derailleur that goes off of here. But I don't know, unless I leave it a three-speed, what do you guys think? It's pretty cool as a three-speed. It shifts smooth and rides smooth and everything. And there's not one out there like it. It's one of a kind. It's just not original. But hey, sometimes not original custom is cool. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. So for those of you that remember the Portland video from a few years back, I bought a 2004 Grey Ghost Repop. And I was trying to make it look like the original bike, so I went and bought pedals for it. Because the ones that were on it were like weird looking, they were like those curved type. So that's what was on this bike when I got it off this gentleman I bought it off of. It had these different kind of curved ones that weren't the ones that came on it. So of course, people in the Schwinn group were pointing out that those weren't the right pedals. So I swapped those pedals that I bought for the Grey Ghost over onto this one to give it that more original look. So yeah, looks a lot cooler with the orange reflectors. It matches a little better. Looks old school, better than the ones that were on it. So yeah, pretty cool. All right, I went ahead and put the decals on. There's a little side one. Looks pretty good. Cleans it up a lot. Put that one on there too. Those decals are a little tricky. I uh, I never put them on before. They're water based. You got to soak them in water. So that's what I did. And then I ended up actually I ended up breaking this one. 
trying to put one on this side so I'm, I'm waiting on another one to come in and then I'm gonna put that one on but I got them all on except for the one there that I broke it'll look like this on the other side and you really got to match it up trying to get it right on top of the old one it's a little tricky or it can be so yeah coming along nicely almost there all right, well, I got this clamp here I replaced. They make a Schwinn approved version. You can buy on eBay. It's nice and chrome. This one's all old looking. I figured I'd kind of spiffy it up with one of them. So I bought one of them and I put one of them on there. So that looks a lot nicer. Now we're going to put the other decal on that I messed up. Those came in as well. So I got to put the other one on this side here and I'm going to show you how I did that. A little tricky. All right, so according to the instructions given by Bicycle Bones, which is where I got a lot of these great parts from on eBay. Thank you. He does. A, he's got a lot of great stuff. Fast shipping. So yeah, check him out. Bicycle Bones. He's got the Schwinn approved darts. They're called for the side of the uh, front forks. So you're supposed to let it sit in water. For three and a half minutes, I got a thing of water here that's warm, warm water it says. Then you pull them out, you let them sit for another three minutes, and then you slide them off onto the, onto the uh, part that you want to put the decal on. So I'm going to show you how I did that. It's a little tricky like I just said, so you really got to be careful and take your time. That's how I screwed these up. I did one good, but not after I messed the first one up. So. Gotta have patience. All right, so the first step is to let it sit for three and a half minutes in warm water. So I got this clean container. And that's what we're gonna do. And then you let that set three and a half minutes. Use your phone to time it. And then be careful pulling it out of there because it will separate from the paper. All right, it's coming up on three and a half minutes. So you gotta be careful pulling it out of there. Like I said, it will separate. See how it is? wants to slide off of there oh and I broke the end see see how delicate they are you really got to be careful with these darts guess I'll try another one all right it's over three and a half minutes so let's try this again hopefully I won't break it this time I'm gonna wet my fingers these are new old stock so they're brittle they're old so you got to be extra careful so you take it out, wants to curl on you, and then let it sit for another three minutes. So reset, start that over again. All right, let's give it a shot. I'll let it sit for a while now, three minutes. It says to uh, make sure this is dry and clean, but I found that it kind of works a little better when it's a little wet. You gotta try to line that up. And I use the paper to lift it back off of there. That's how I tore it the last time. And that's on there pretty good. Pretty, pretty dead on, pretty close. So you gotta be careful, you don't wanna press your luck. Like me, when you end up breaking it. So I'm gonna let that dry, let that set up. I don't know if I mentioned this either, but I got these new little uh, cable clamps, original Schwinn ones that they have online too you can purchase. So I figured I'd use them too to spiffy it up a little. The other ones are a little rusty looking. All right, well, I keep saying that I'm getting to the end of the line here, but I keep finding other little stuff that I want to touch up. This seat is atrocious. It's pretty beat up. It doesn't match. I can't find an original because they're so expensive and hard to find. I have not come across one yet. So maybe if somebody in the comments section knows of a Manta Ray seat, it's got the wider piece here. It's not the same as a typical banana seat. So if somebody's got one, get at me, let me know, comment, or send us an email. 
So online on eBay, they have these $35 cheap little knockoff seats that are all brand new, ready to go. They got an orange one. They have a ton of different colors, but for 35 bucks, I figured, hey, why don't I just stick one of them on there for now just to get by. So that's what I'm going to do. I ordered it. It's coming. So rather than try to real pollster this one and then just swap it over in the future anyway, I figured I'll just get one of them cheap seats, put it on there. It'll look nice for now while I'm riding it around. Then if I ever come across an original seat, then I'll, I'll put that on there. And I won't be out too much money. So for 35 bucks, can't beat that. So yeah, once that comes in, I'll stick that on there. The only other thing besides that, at least for now that I can think of, this graphic on this shifter. It's a three-speed graphic because this is a three-speed shifter, not an original. So I ordered a three-speed graphic to stick on here. So I'm going to have to get this old one off and put the new one on. And that will clean that up and tidy that up a lot and make it look a lot nicer. So yeah, I kind of like the three-speed. It's pretty cool. All right, I got the decal here. So let's see if I can put it on this shifter without messing it up. All right, here goes. All right, I had to shift it around a little to get it lined up perfectly. But yeah, looks good. So now I just got to let it sit and dry, and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, and we're back. I finally got the seat. You're not going to believe what it took to get this seat. What a bunch of crap I had to go through. Hurdles I had to jump through. I had to order it four times in order to finally get it. That was from eBay and Amazon. So I originally ordered this seat on August 8th from uh, eBay from a guy called American Eagle Cycles in Downey, California. He refunded me right away. Hit me back with the money. Here, I don't have the seat. Take your money back. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I need a seat, so I'm going to have to try to order another one. So I looked around on eBay again. August 10th, this was two days later. Well, by the time I realized it, so I hit up Prime Bikes, also on eBay. The guy shipped it out, and guess what? It never arrived. I waited and waited. It never moved from that Los Angeles shipping center. And he was based out of Downey, California again. I don't know what it is with Downey, but those two guys were out of Downey, and they were kind of being fishy. So that one never arrived. I had to open a case on eBay and get my money back. I was kind of ticked off. So I had to wait and wait for that. So then I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go to Amazon. My buddy Bezos. Let me see, maybe, maybe that cockle-eyed guy will help me, right? So I go on uh, Amazon, find this guy Street Lowrider on there. August 19th, I ordered that one shipped it and it said it was nearby it came all the way to indiana from downey california again i don't know what it is with this downey but uh came all the way out made it all the way nearby it was like 20 miles away i could have went and picked it up never arrived kept saying days after day after day after day it was going to arrive then that day would come and go and it would never show up so frustrating so that was amazon so then I had to get refunded again. This is the third time now I've ordered the seat. 
So then I'm like, I don't even know where else to order from because there's only so many sellers that got these cheap seats. I don't want to buy some expensive banana seat in the meantime while I'm looking for the actual, you know, manta ray seat. But I wanted something that looked a little better and matched the bike. I didn't want that ugly white seat. I want something spiffy. So I head back to eBay. I found another guy on eBay on September 1st, Lux Low Bikes. I ordered from him and finally it arrived days later. And guess where he was based out of? Not Downey, California. He was based out of Colorado. So finally I got the seat. Next thing I know, the holes are originally back here on the seat. I get the seat and they're up further. So I'm like, great, is this thing even gonna work? Is it gonna fit? So I had to bend the seat in and me and Pa had to bend on this, this sissy bar a little bit to kind of widen it out a little. And then I bent on this and we got it to fit in there. Thankfully it worked. And then I added, I went and ordered this bracket and I added the uh, Golco original reflector. I got three of them from Doc Neon because he was all into old Schwinn's Phantoms and stuff. So Doc gave me three of these. So I was able to use one, they're original. So that was nice. Saved me a little bit of money. So then there's a couple other little things. Uh, I had to put the, the graphic on the shifter, which I got off eBay. I just did that a few minutes ago. It's still kind of drying and setting up. I used a uh, paint pen Sharpie, one of those silver Sharpie markers. I used that and then I uh, spray painted it. I'm gonna clear over it. But yeah, what a bunch of crap I had to do. So I've been riding the bike in the meantime. That We started this in June, I believe. And I've been riding the bike, you know, pretty much weekly since I started it. And I already got a couple scuffs. One here on the chain guard I did already. Dinging it up already like a ding, because I'm a ding ding. I, I dropped the shifter here and kind of hit that graphic on accident. <laughs> Check that out, yeah. You can't get that close, Mr. Cameraman. And I got a ding here on this dart already. So I mean, I, it's, it's getting patinaed up already to kind of match. But I, that's what I bought it for was to ride it. I didn't want to just shove it in the barn and look at it. Another thing I added were these orange dice I got off eBay as well. Adds a nice little touch to the bike. Also, they got these caps that help clean up the look of the, the bar. So I added that on there, tidied it up a little. So I noticed one more other thing I'll go over before I round this out. The uh, brakes were squeaking when I would stop. They would they'd make like a really loud squeak noise. People would be looking at me like I was crazy. So I realized you have to tow the brake pads instead of having them flat like this you have to kind of add a little a little bend to them so that the one side of the pad hits before the the rest of the pad so it, it helps with cutting down on that noise and they sound good now they don't squeal or squeak or anything so it's a little trick for you bike guys if your brakes are making noise so yeah there there you have it a lot of uh, time and money and effort put into it but it looks a lot better than it did when I first got it all the things I had to do to spiffy it up so I'm gonna add this one to my collection and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video head over to our online store pick up some of our Carol apparel subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already follow us on Facebook and Instagram Crack with your bicycles <laughs> Let me know what you have. Huffy, Schwinn, Murray, whatever. So, uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, there's your dinner. Ha-ha! <laughs> Woo! Schwinn Manor, 1971! Yeah! Alright, I'm gonna go take it for a quick spin. Let's go try her out. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, hey, Pa, you're back from your vacation. Yeah, I was in Maine. Oh, how was that? No, it was awesome. You know what I was eating at? I was eating lobster. Lots of lobster. Over there in Bar Harbor. Nice. So okay. what are you doing? Where are you going? I'm gonna go take this bike out and cruise it around. I just did a restore on it. 
All right, well, when you get done, get back, and we got lawnmowers to work on. Well, I don't want to work on that. I want to work on bikes. Oh, and by the way, you know what kind of bicycle I had when I was a kid? It was an all-pro, because we couldn't afford a Schwinn. Nice. All right, go for a ride. All right, move it, Pop. And there's your lobster dinner. Woo! Ha And I was also in Bangor. Hanging out with uh, Martha Stewart and Stephen King. You know what we were doing. We was eating lobster. One thing I noticed, this cheap seat is not very comfy. There's like no padding on here. Ugh.